start recording. Good evening, good afternoon, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen, to Global Inform for Speaking session number 236. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining in today to enrich our today's session. Thank you so much. I believe right now people are from all over the world, United States of America, India, Pakistan, UAE, what else? Every part of the globe. Thank you so much. I really appreciate. Today, our topics master is Toastmaster Umar Farooq, very famous, very notorious, well found in every Toastmasters meeting. And let's see what he has got for us today. And definitely, I'm excited to receive his topic. Let's see what he has got for us. Ladies and gentlemen, today, you're going to manage your time by yourself, maximum two minutes and 30 seconds and minimum one minute. I wish you all good luck. Let's put our hands together to welcome our own Toastmaster Umar as today's host of the meeting. Welcome Toastmaster Umar. Before we get started, just a point of order. Somebody offered to be the timer and he and I can share the duties if you want. Oh, please go ahead. Who is that? Uh, uh, in the chat, somebody said that. All right, Hishan. So he and uh, I can, can share. When he's talking, I'll time him. Super. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Hishan and Toastmaster Rajiv sir. Really appreciate it. Please go ahead and manage your time. Ladies and gentlemen, you can pin Toastmaster Ishan and Toastmaster Rajiv when they are managing your time. Best of luck and Toastmaster Umar, over to you. Wonderful. Thank you, Jim Amjad, for the introduction. So today, table topics will be about a little bit philosophy, spiritualism, and very easy topics because it has been a long time I have been a table topic master in Improvised Speaking, so I thought I should give up quite easy topics to everyone. And so we'll go first with Toastmaster Farida because she wants to jump in earlier. So let's start with Toastmaster Farida. Dr. Farida, yes. Dr. Farida, your topic is question actually. What is the difference between belief and knowledge? What is the difference between belief and knowledge? Dr. A very good evening to my global impromptu family members. The topic that has been given to me is what is the difference between belief and knowledge? I thank you, T.I. Mumai, to give me a topic with which I cannot contradict or contest or disagree in any way. A human mind is supposed to be extremely inquisitive. This is an innate thing that we grow up with. Even then, there are many a things that is passed down to us by our mother, our father, our members, grandparents who tell us these stories and they imprint upon our minds with certain things that cannot be justified scientifically. That's where the belief comes in. There are many of us who will change their pathway if a black cat crosses their road or will never ever walk under the ladder, no matter whether there is any scientific basis for it or not. All, more than 70% of us do glance, take a glance at the horoscope on the backside of a newspaper which comes every day, don't we? So that's where the belief comes in. Belief does not only mean in the religious way, it can be even otherwise. So we have our beliefs that we grow up with, they have been imprinted upon our minds and we continue to believe no matter how hard we try to convince ourselves, science, no justification for it. Knowledge is however, what we acquire throughout our academic years and even afterwards by virtue of reading, Googling, surfing, and knowledge is something which we can review and renew over the process of time. It always gets refreshed, new research comes about, the knowledge gets updated. In the olden days, the knowledge was much more different. I graduated 32 years back, and I can say that, that I have been studying almost every single day for the past, <laughs> God knows, <laughs> just in an attempt to refresh my knowledge. And this is the belief, difference between belief and knowledge. If you have a belief, you just blind, uh, blindly follow it. You follow it with your heart. You don't try to question it too much. For the inquisitive minds, however, knowledge should be the that should be your pillar in life. And that is my take for tonight. 
I love the audience here tonight. Stay blessed. Love you all. Thank you, Dr. Faith. A wonderful take on the topic about beliefs and knowledge. So we move on to DJ Amjad has to leave early. So we'll take him first. DJ Amjad. So your yes, topic sir. is no person. So no person was ever honored for what he received. I'll repeat. No person was ever honored for what he received. DJ Amjad. Thank you so much, Mr. Topics Master. No person was ever on earth what he has received. Yes, indeed. Let's talk about my life only. Let's not generalize. Did I expect coming to this planet, getting this life? Of course not. And I have no idea when I'm going to depart as everyone has departed. And whosoever has departed till date got nothing with him or her. So whatever is happening in between is bonus. It was not planned. But yes, whatever we are doing, if we do something good for people, we are going to get rewarded. So that's what philosophy is life, is what I understood from nature. And of course, trying to learn from it, trying to comprehend, trying to keep the legacy and leave the legacy. Yes, we did not mean now let's talk about practically what we think, what we perceive. For example, we always want to become rich, become successful. But let's talk about now people who are successful, according to us. Did they plan what they have reached? Not really. They tried their best. They were achieving small milestone every single day, but they believed in themselves. And one thing was assured that they were consistent with honesty, whatever they were doing, wherever they were doing. And today they are called successful people. If we talk to them, they're very normal people as normal we are. But what we have to learn from these people, if you wanna live forever, forever mean for next one century or two centuries, we have to do something very big, which common people are not doing. At least we will be remembered in people's books, in their documentaries, in their speeches. They will name us for that. For We have to go something out of the way. People who are not generally doing, people who are not following the rules and regulations, we have to break everything and do something very big. I always pray to Allah Almighty that I don't want to die a normal person. Ladies and gentlemen, I have no idea what will happen in my life as I'm talking about my life. But one thing I wish as prayer that I want to do something very big, which is going to be ever remembered, at least for next one century, two centuries, people will remember that person came and he did his best for society, for humanity. This is what my understanding for this topic is. Yes, we never meant what we got in our life. Thank you so much. Back to you and wish you good luck all. Wonderful. Take on the topic, Jamjat. Yes. We get honored only for what we give out in society and not be what we receive. So wonderful. Next we have with us Toastmaster Savita. Yes, please. Toastmaster Savita, your topic is a diamond does not lose value due to lack of admiration. I repeat, a diamond does not lose value due to lack of admiration. Toastmaster Savita, what do you Thank you so much, Toastmaster Umar, and my greetings to everyone present here. People are so much inquisitive about the value of diamond. But do they realize actually what it is? I remember one story. One boy picks up some stones from the treasure and goes to his father. Father, what is the value of this stone? Father says, just go to few people and just tell them, just show this two finger when they ask the value. He goes to the first person he say, and shows this stone. He says, how much? This boy shows just two fingers. 
two dollars and he just that boy comes back to his father father he said for it to father he says it's just two dollars okay son again you go to this person next day he goes and the other person that was a goldsmith he gives he shows that value he shows that stones the goldsmith asked this boy how much again he shows the stone finger two hundred dollars doesn't reply he just comes back he tells father two hundred dollars that goldsmith was saying okay son go to this person now who keeps the treasures and oh, same thing when he asks just show the two finger that he the son goes to the treasurer and treasurer asks how much is the value of this the son again shows two finger Two hundred million dollars, and the boy returns back to his father. Father says, "See, the value is changing for the person who knows the value of that thing. If you know the value of diamond, if someone knows the value of diamond, then only they understand what actually the diamond is. So." For anything, diamond, I'm not saying just for a stone, for any person, diamond can be any person in our life who is valuable to us. It can be our parents, it can be our mentor, it can be our, some teacher, some person in our life who gives us values. Yes, if it lacks value, we have to do it. Yes, I agree with this. Yes, thank you. Back to you, Toastmaster Omar. Wonderful take, Sujita ma'am, on this, and it's a very famous story also about your self-worth and uh, recognizing your own value and where you are recognized more. So wonderful. Next, we have with us to Gavilya Shashant. Are you there? Am I audible? Gavilya Shashant. So word of the day is inquisitive. So you have to. I encourage you to use it. So your topic is. Educate the children, and it won't be necessary to punish the men. I'll repeat: Educate the children, and it won't be necessary to punish the men. Devali Sushant. Thank you, David Topic Master. Well, I guess that's a true sentence. Everything is from step one to step hundred, and a man is not someone who's just dropped from our air, right? He's not someone who's dropped from sky. He's someone in some stage he was a child. So when we do when we do it from the first step, and that's how it grows. When a plant when a plant is being planted in the soil, we take it care we take care of it step by step, and that's how finally we get the output from it in the point of a tree. Just like that, if we educate the children, the small minds with positive thinking and confidence, and the men won't be needed to be corrected, right? Well, I guess that's true. Just like how every father does to his or her son. Well, as you can see, the first, my dad always says that, Sushant, you should not do the same mistakes I did. And I, re and I guess that's true. He's just educating me from my childhood so that I can be more perfect than him. And that's what every father wishes. But not something like doing homework on time, okay? I'm not really that type. So just say, educate the small minds with positivity and confidence. That in the that in the future you don't need to worry about them. Thank you. Over to the table, topic master. Wonderful, good take, Sushant. Yes, of course, educate the children so you don't have to punish the man. So wonderful take on the topic. Next we have Rakshit. Rakshit, are you there? Yes, Rakshit. Rakshit, are you there? No, he's not here. So let's move on to the next one. Chayan. Chayan Pant. Okay. So, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Okay, so you're not spotted. Okay, yes. So your topic is, fire does not give birth to fire, but to ashes. I'll repeat, fire does not give birth to fire, but to ashes. 
Mr. Toastmaster, the history of the world is littered with stories where hate and anger destroyed civilizations. Some definitely go ahead and say that a fiery temperament is what defies a man. But history is filled with stories where that fiery temperament wreaked havoc on innocent peoples who had nothing to do with the reason of his anger. An eye for an eye makes the whole world blind is something that the father of my nation, Mahatma Gandhi said. And trying to be in this game of upmanship, which is fueled by hate and anger, can only lead to our destruction, our collective destruction as a civilization and as a race. We see so many problems in the world, which are built on anger, which are built on hate. And if we look at the reason for that hate, it is some kind of hurt that we have kept inside, nurtured it for years and years, which has become so an integral part of us that we cannot part away from it. But try to bring love into your heart and you will see that that hate will disappear. And only when hate goes away and love stays, can all the problems in the world be sorted. Because when you look at someone, you do not look at the person with anger or hate, but you live, look at the person with love and compassion. Don't you agree, Mr. Table Topic Master? I absolutely agree. Hate breeds hate. Love breeds love. So, wonderful take, Chayapant, and great message in your delivery. So, next we have with us Rajiv. Rajiv, are you there? Yes, sir. More or less. <laughs> More or less, you are there. <laughs> okay. So, listen carefully. This is fate. F-A-T-E. Okay. Fate leads the willing and drags along the reluctant. I'll repeat. Fate leads the willing and drags along the reluctant. Rajiv. Could you repeat it just one more time, please? I'll repeat. F-A-T-E. Fate leads the willing and drags along the reluctant. Thank you. In 1989, many of you were not born. I made myself a promise I will never practice immigration law because it's beneath my dignity. It's a bunch of form filling, I said. I was a litigator. I will always remain a litigator. And I said to myself, I do best with corporate litigation. For a while I did. And then I realized this is such a loser's game. When I win, my client hates me because I've charged them lots of money. When I lose, my client hates me because I lost the case. I happened to fall into immigration law, just doing one or two cases. And the next thing I realized, this was really my life's calling. In USA, three of the most difficult areas of law are considered to be taxation, security exchange commission regulations, which is stock exchange, and immigration law. There is absolutely no rhyme and reason in immigration law. It is a bunch of priorities strung together artificially. But at the other end of it lie people. So fate definitely dragged me just a little bit and then I realized this is really my calling. I have been practicing immigration law for 30 years. And I can tell you this, I don't have a client. I have a friend in every city in the United States and every continent of the world. We have worked with people, we have produced results. And more than that, we have been always empathic towards the people we work with. So ladies and gentlemen, in Zen, there is a saying, don't push the river, just follow it. Back to you, Mr. Table Topics Master. Interesting take, Rajiv, on this topic. It is a good topic, and you shared your own story with us about immigration law, and you were reluctant. And then it became your calling. So wonderful take. And you became the willing one, not the reluctant one. Good. So next we have Jesse Mem. Jesse Mem, are you there? Yes. 
जैसी मैम लॉन्ग टाइम नो सी ओके सो योर टॉपिक इज लिसन केयरफुली वट वी नीड इज नॉट द विल टू बिलीव बट द विश टू फाइंड आउट आई रिपीट वॉट वी नीड इज नॉट द विल टू बिलीव बट द विश टू फाइंड आउट जैसी मैम वर्ड ऑफ द डे इज इनक्विजिटिव yes um good evening everyone what we need to do is not to believe not to not the will to believe but the wish to uh, find out ah huh? wish to find out find it find it yes we are given to believe so many things but very few of us are inquisitive in finding the truth just as um, uh, dr farid has told there are so many uh, uh, concepts or the the traditions we follow and everybody when it is pushed on to us we need to have a will to, whether to believe it or to follow it okay find out it's happening now but still there are so many so many concepts which has got no reason uh, no foundation it's just passed on and many of us simply follow because we we think that will there will be consequences for us as she said to the cats uh, when uh, when the crossing or when the secret is uh, when you go for a uh, a uh, proposal don't go three people go in the odd number so many things and learn and people follow but why we don't also when you are widowed the widow is not supposed to enter into so many areas poor widow has not done anything she her husband is lost and you you put the whole thing on the widow but that is the thing that the whole world today is not having that wish to find out why it is uh, why it is so why it cannot be the other way what is the what's the reason behind it can you can we garbage the uh, the the concept that we we were given to believe so that's it. that is very much is required will to believe it or to garbage it and the wish to follow each and everything that you come across over to you first master umar farooq interesting <laughs> take on the topic it was tricky one but you did really well and you were there around out <laughs> but it was good so it's all about curiosity the more curious you are to find out things and the more you will discover it's not about the with the curiosity is should be there so next we have with us baby nidhi is not here i saw uh, she was initially here but so baby parikpadan i think what is the pronunciation Baby, are you there? Baby is not here. Baby. Baby is not here. Okay. So Sunita, ma'am. Sunita, ma'am, are you there? Yes, I am here. So you want an easy topic, I know. okay so i just have a question for you okay what is more important character or intellect and why what is more important character or intellect and why sunita good evening toastmaster umar farooq and good evening to all my family impromptu family so this is a no brainer to me at least what is more important character or intellect definitely somebody with character you know person with intellect will be so full of himself it's difficult to live with them a person who is of a good character might not be so intelligent the maid who comes to clean my house not a very intelligent well read person but basically uh, i mean there are times when you really wonder whether she's got a brain 
the things that she does because it's a routine job she does it on a routine but i know she is a good soul she's a good person uh, her instinct her basic nature is that of a nice person so i don't care whether she does a good job whether she uses her intellect and does it properly whether she will give me a good debate on some important thing that's happening in the nation as long as she's good and she's a good person then i think she is intellectual uh, she is intellect and uh, more uh, character both are rich in her so that's uh, you know very many a times all of us are not born brilliant with this thing and sometimes we tend to you know even with our children we want them to achieve more what we need to do is build their character make them people with good values that is the most important thing so um, intellect is a by product if you are good probably that will happen but character definitely goes the most oh it was master umar <laughs> interesting take and of course character is very important so why not have character that has intellect <laughs> together both have a win win situation <laughs> so uh, best of both worlds you need to so next we have with us heshan you want to take now or maybe later at the end you are a timer so he can take it now or time okay yes please yes heshan your topic is a easy one the fears we don't face become our limits the fears we don't face become our limits heshan Yeah. I'll repeat: the fears we don't face become our limits. Word of the day is inquisitive. Over to you. The fears we don't face becomes our limits. Since I joined this global impromptu speaking session, when it was asked. to grab the timer stroll i told that i can't it was a limit of me since my breakthrough by the double atsl imagine toast masters club i used to take many many roles initially it was very very hard to do the timer stroll by sharing background screens now i embraced that difficulty identified it and started working on it same as that i did the grammarian stroll by incorporating powerpoint slides which i was awarded as the best role player i applied the same to the general evaluator stroll when doing the when doing my very first toastmasters table topics evaluation when doing my very first toastmasters speech evaluation i incorporated the sandwich trick and i was achieved as the best evaluator for my very first toastmasters speech evaluation it was really a fantastic achievement as well as it was inquisitive finally i would like to say the fears of you are your limits mr table topics master over to you good energy shan wonderful take on the topic you gave your own examples of those masters about your fear of speaking and how you achieved in it wonderful next we have with us navid Yes, sir. Navid, am I audible, sir? Yes, you are audible. I have a simple one for you. Peace is not always absence of war. I will repeat: peace is not always absence of war. Navid, thank you very much. 
टेबल टॉपिक मास्टर टी एम उमर सर एंड गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू होप यू ऑल आर फाइन पीस इज नॉट ऑलवेज इन द एबसेंट ऑफ वार अ वेरी थॉटफुल टॉपिक आई वॉज वंस रीडिंग वन टॉपिक रिगार्डिंग द प्रॉब्लम सॉल्विंग टेक्निक्स I found one chart, and it was like there was one smooth road, and after the smooth road, there was one dig on the surface of the road, or a pit. Normally, you see the trucks are uh, in the pits or in the digs, and they are unable to go on the road ahead so we see that they were not having the proper tools or the speed or the guidance or the knowledge of the road because of it they were stuck on the road similarly when we are in comfort zone we are coming in the comfort zone on the smooth surface we don't realize that ahead there would be anything difficult coming we will not be able to do this so when we are having a smooth surface it does not mean that difficulties are not coming we should be prepared before the time we are here like to be table talk master we are uh, table topic and from this speaking i am here for the purpose of uh dealing with the uncertainties dealing with the people i am working with the management i am working with i should be able to hold my uh, what we say confidence in it in order to prepare myself for the future endeavors so yes it does not mean that whenever you have peaceful road it does not mean that you will not feel uh, you will not feel uh, face difficulties so over to you temple down master thank you wonderful uh, good take on this david you try to relate to yourself also so good take on the topic next is navin sir yes hello navin sir in quarantine okay <laughs> so navin sir your topic is time is the father of truth its mother is our mind i will repeat time is the father of truth its mother is our mind what's your take on this word of the day is inquisitive friends the best thing about time is that it is uncertain and no one knows about it and and the best thing is it is unpredictable if time were, were, were predictable of course or if we know that what the destination is going going to be like we will lose the charm of traveling so friends that that is the beauty of life that it is unpredictable like like as uh, i never dreamt that i'm going to be in quarantine during this week uh, but but, th- but that's how it is and one should embrace any situation which he comes across and face it face it with dignity and accept what is going on in life give your best because as it is as william shakespeare has once said the evil that men do lives after them the good is often interred with their bones you will be remembered by what you have done in in your life and who and how many lives have you touched and what is the impact that you have created on the mankind rather than than what you have left for the posterity so so that is what uh, i would like to highlight that, that that time doesn't remain remain the same the same the, the our my thought uh, which was there about 5 years ago is totally been been transformed only within within 5 years from now because uh, no one dreamt that, that our lifestyle would be like this or the way we live would, would be would be so different 
so of course uh, i mean make it a point to touch as many people and create a meaningful and, and an impactful life and have a healthy relationship with with everyone as they say handle a book as a bee does a flower extract its sweetness but do not damage it so create a healthy mankind for for everyone over to you interesting improvisation this was on the bean and interesting good take on the topic yes so next we have deepa deepa are you there yes <laughs> so deepa your topic is why is to resolve patient to perform i will repeat why is to resolve patient to perform deepa thank you for that intriguing topic as always umar has a, a way of getting our minds working and my mind is feeling very rusty after a long time of not coming here resolution resolving to do something about what we want to do brings me take me back to new years we we often have things that we want to fix we want to change about ourselves and i think it's a good thing to resolve but even better to have an action plan to to really go towards it consistent consistently and make sure whatever you resolve is realistic time bound and measurable so i do believe in keeping resolutions but not new year's resolutions keep weekly resolutions daily resolutions monthly resolutions and what was the other one patience to <laughs> what was it over <laughs> patience to patient to perform patience to perform we often in this generation we've seen everybody in getting impatient we we i've been born in a time when i couldn't get instant information i would go to the library to get information but but the, but then when i started growing up there was the computer there was the internet and i know how instant knowledge becomes how instant information is but have you ever understood what is more rare now it's not getting information it's now understanding creating new things and that doesn't happen instantly to create knowledge and to be creative is it takes patience as a virtue i definitely think these are two different virtues to have this new years the resolve to do whatever we resolve to do and the patience to perform over to toastmaster omar <laughs> that is the height of improvisation <laughs> that is interesting so from resolve you take the resolutions <laughs> good good so but still that is very interesting even if you have done not that by idea but still speak on it you took them to split the topic into two parts and talk about it in a different so good very good take on it pratik are you there yes i am there okay so pratik your topic is a simple one so i can't believe what you say because i see what you do i will repeat i can't believe what you say because i see what you do pratik singh what of the days inquisitive our mind is very much inquisitive because people are deceptive people show that they are doing this but they do something this and we need to have a very curious mind to really understand this it's not a simple job you really have to see through people you have to analyze people and you have to understand their body language their eye contact the way they speak and this is how you catch them merely believing that what they say is not going to work in today's world we have to be very smart let me talk about the politics of office that i am facing right now in front of me my colleague says at hey pratik you are doing fantastically well how is your project going what is the update on this project please share me so that i can take some idea this is only for learning purpose but once i share some information to them they use it to their advantage and my disadvantage so i need to see through people 
I need to understand them that they are really deceptive or not so that I can catch hold of them and understand that what I need to really follow. So ladies and gentlemen, please do not easily get into trap because the world is filled with very different perceptive people. I am not say that they are very good or bad, but the thing is that they are weird and they can really take you for any disadvantage. So be very careful, understand them and do your work. So be very, very careful with people and do your job. And next time, whenever somebody says, don't believe at their face value, try to get inside it, understand it, and then you yourself decide it. Thank you and over to you. Great, Pati. Good take on the topic. Yes, especially don't believe the politician. <laughs> Vote <laughs> yeah. for the actions. <laughs> okay, not for the promises. So wonderful I take on the topic. Next, Biswas is not here, I believe. So Akib is here. Akib. Yes, yes, Tosma here, Omar. So Akib, your topic is if you look for per uh, perfection, you will never be content. If you look for perfection, you will never be content. Akib, what are the days in positive? If you look for perfect perfection, you will never get the content. You will never, never, you will never get content, right? You will never be content. Thanks, sir. Thanks, Toastmaster Umar. This takes me back to my second project at my college. We kept on doing the same programming and we came on same result for five times. But our mentor wanted it to be perfect. You know, like, sir, we have made it for five times and this structure looks perfect. Saying, no, it has to be perfectly suitable as per the rule book. Me and my friend, we were like, bro, I cannot keep running on this. We have already walked upon for last three days and it's not meeting his expectation. But ultimately, it is demotivating us. Great. And from that, from that day, we were like, we should not follow our mentor. We should mentor ourselves. So let us take this to the next level. So we took it to the next level. And then the <clears throat> superior told us, yeah, it's okay. You can go ahead. Then we realized that our content came when we felt that we are right. And when someone said that it is not working perfect, when it is not good, we were pushed back. And this happened now as well. Whenever I put my ideas across the table, it may not be perfect, but this is what came out of my mind and I want it to be implemented. And when it, it doesn't get, when it doesn't get recognition from the management and they say it is not good, I feel bad. I, I like have put a lot of effort. Why, why they feel it is not happening and little discontent happens. So I believe that we should not, you, we should not die for perfection rather than we should look for things, which is coming out of our heart, which we believe in, which I believe in. I may not write uh, like a perfect calligrapher, but whatever I write, this is coming out of me. And this is what I believe in. So I like it. I'm, I'm not running to become a best calligrapher in the world. I am running to write it, to convey an idea and it should be readable. That is what uh, the real purpose is and that it's already conveying. So uh, I suggest that we should not die for perfection and whatever is coming out of your heart is everything and we should just follow it. Uh, over to you Toastmaster Umar. A wonderful take on this, uh, Akev, and you put some story into it and try to conclude it also with a call to action. Wonderful, good take. The so next we have with us, Munish, are you there? Yes, please. Munish, your topic is a sign of intelligence is an awareness of one's own ignorance. I'll repeat, a sign of intelligence is an awareness of one's own ignorance. Munish. Good evening, everybody. 
a sign of intelligence is one own ignorance. The person who's intelligent never brag, never blow their own trumpet that they are intelligent. People come to know when they talk about facts and figures. Generally, common person exaggerate the things. But the people, those who are intelligent, either they remain mum or whenever they speak, they speak to the point and whatever they speak, it has a weightage. That is noticed by the people. That's the reason we call those people intelligent. It's not everybody's intelligent. I've observed some of the people, those who studied from the, one of the best schools, and they are writer, but they have a bad habit of exaggerating the things. We can't call those people intelligent. We can call only those people intelligent, those who study every day and update themselves and never exaggerate, never boast. And when they have to speak, they speak with facts and figure and everybody likes them. They do not have to tell anybody that they are intelligent. People talk from their back that that person is super intelligent and they are known everywhere. Thank you. Over to the Toastmaster, please. Interesting take, Samanish. Good thoughts on the intelligence. Nobody has to prove their intelligence if you are truly intelligent. Wonderful. Next, we have with us Jaya. Jaya Raghuvanshi. Yeah, very good evening. Yes, Jaya ma'am. Your topic is experience teaches only the teachable. Experience teaches only the teachable. Experience teaches teach only, only, teachable. only the teachable. Teachable. Yes. A very good evening to all of you. Uh, experience teaches only teachable. Yes, I do agree on this. If, uh, if you don't have experience, how are you going to teach? How, you, how are you going to teach others, your own children? or children in school. In order to know and be inquisitive, you yourself need to first study and learn and go through that to gain experience. Then only we can teach our own um, offsprings. For example, we all go to uh, schools and college and we study, we do our masters and then we do job. And as, uh, as the years go by in, in our careers, we gain more and more experience, not only in career wise, the other uh, other things, um, for example, uh, in our environment, uh, games, or um, you can say cooking, anything it can be. If we don't learn and we don't keep doing for years and years, we won't get experience. For that, we need to learn do it to get experience and in turn we can teach our offsprings because they are the ones who will ask questions to you they will be inquisitive so 
Hence, to clear their inquisitive, we need to uh, have experience to answer their questions, right? So yes, I do agree on this phrase. Over to you. Wonderful take on the topic, Jamie. So next we move on to Atifa. Atifa, are you there? Yes. So Atifa, your topic is the price of inaction is far greater than the cost of making a mistake. The price of inaction is far greater than the cost of making a mistake. Atifa, uh, what are the days you Before starting, can I ask the time limit and join late? Say two, two minutes, one minute green, one and a half minute yellow, two minutes red, and 30 seconds to wrap up the speech. Thank you. Um, the price of inaction is greater than the price of making mistakes. How well said. The human condition is all about uh, being unsure about decisions to be taken. We do not have it fed into us about which rational choice to make. But yes, life is full of choices. And so if we are exploring our human potential, that means we have to take one choice or the other, take those decisions. And because we are not fed with the right uh, answers from before, from before birth, so we are not computers. So uh, what happens is invariably there would be mistakes. Now, not taking action. It is, I think, tantamount to being not exploring your full human potential. That means you are being too timid. You are not exploring all the avenues. And so I would strongly suggest it's better to make mistakes and learn from their mistakes and keep moving. The importance of moving cannot be gainsaid. We have to keep moving, be motivated, you know, have that motion in us. And yes, when we keep moving, we are going to fall. But take it in the right spirit, pick yourself up and, you know, do better the next time. Take it in the right spirit. That is much, much more um, better avenue for acquiring more knowledge, for achieving more potential than simply to stay inactive. Over to you, Toastmaster of the day. Wonderful, good take on the topic, Atifa. Yes, of course, if you don't take any action, you will not know what is the way that is going to do the things you want to do. So you have to explore, you have to learn and improve. So wonderful. So next, Dinesh. Dinesh, are you there? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Dinesh, I have a question for you, no? the topic. So your topic is, question is, is science evolving faster than our ethics? I'll repeat, is science evolving faster than our ethics? Dinesh, what is your thoughts on it? Okay. Um, yeah, uh, looks tricky one, but uh, let me give it a try. Thank you so much, uh, Masa, and very good evening, uh, improv to global improv to uh, members. Science evolves faster than uh, ethics. I feel... Uh, um, I think science is not evolving, you know, faster than the ethics, right? Uh, um, because, you know, uh, the, the science, maybe the, the discoveries or the, uh, the things that we already know is always constant. But the, you know, ethics that, that keeps on changing based on our personality, right? If, uh, <clears throat> if it is based on the situation that we are in, uh, like if, if we like someone and... Uh, uh, we treat them in a different way and the you know if, if you have some negative towards them then I think you treat them in a negative way so I feel you know uh, uh, the ethics are something that keeps on changing uh, based on the situation but I feel you know science that is quite constant uh, over the time so yeah that's what I can take it uh, Pratik sir uh, Umar sir thank you so much good take on the topic Dinesh yes Sometimes we feel that science is overtaking the ethics. It compromises our sense of what is right and wrong. That is called ethics. So, but wonderful take. And next we have with us Padma. Padma, are you there? Then Padma and Gita and Om Mishra are left only. So Padma, are you there? 
पदमा पदमा ऐसा पदमा ले आएंगे पदमा इज नॉट हेयर ओके पदमा इज ऑन नॉट ऑन म्यूट बट स्टिल शी इज नॉट ओम मिश्रा इज देयर ही इज गोन आल्सो रियली ओके सो गीता इज हेयर गीता कैशियर या सो गीता कैशियर आई हैव अ क्वेश्चन फॉर यू आल्सो so your question is if money cannot buy happiness can we ever be truly happy with no money i'll repeat it is said that money cannot buy happiness can we ever be truly happy without money geeta thank you so much for that amazing topic yeah money and happiness are no doubt related to one another people are happy the more they earn when they earn a lot of money that gives them a lot of joy that's very true no wonder we go to different countries we are going i cannot deny this fact cannot be denied no matter what we say so people ask we tell our children to study and get into big uh, get big degrees because they, we want a good fortune for them but there is always a but here money is not the sole reason to be happy it is not you cannot it's not money that gives you soul happiness we have to understand this fact this debate i have been doing with my student a number of times the children these days feel that money is everything in life ma'am if there is no money how can we get treated in the uh, if we get the biggest of diseases how can we get no it's true that we need money when we are sick we need money we need money for our comfort but then people today they are misusing it they want more and more and more and they, it's not giving them happiness the more you want the more you are getting the more your desire is this is a fact of life and i'm really seeing it we were during our times and i can see during uh, my parents time how satisfied people were they had very less money they didn't have too much of money they had more children and every and still we didn't have ac we didn't have car at that time in spite of that weren't we happy i think we were much more happier we were happier than what the children are today today they have all the comfort every person every individual in the family has his own car and they have a lot of money a lot of a big luxurious mansion to live in they have everything in their life but sad i'm really sad to say that they are not satisfied and that is not giving them true true happiness true happiness comes when you are united with living even with meager salary with less salary when you are united living with your relatives when you are doing selfless things to others you get a lot of joy when you want only for yourself people are becoming selfish today and that is the reason it's not giving them true happiness thank you back to you table top so it's a very interesting paradoxical kind of a topic actually because you cannot live without money also you say money cannot buy happiness so it's a very convoluted aspect down over there so both are very important so at their own time also so wonderful padma are you there or not we because i think we are finished padma i think he is not responding So who, who is going is to be a topic to toast master umar now <laughs> next time i'll participating thank you okay no issues yep. good to have you with us yep can i give okay. a topic if, if, if no one else has... yeah please okay. uh, toast master navin go ahead okay so 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 basically it, it, it like it will be a, a very similar topic which you gave to toast master geeta that money is not everything in life but make sure you have made sufficient before you make the statement <laughs> okay so I'll, i'll repeat again uh, do you want me to repeat again yes of course you can repeat it now yes yeah. money is not everything in life but make sure you have made sufficient amount before you make the statement see that that i actually strongly agree with this topic of course money is very important in life see our world is constructed in such a way that we are so much dependent on money if you have no money at all do you think you can live a happy life what you will be doing see ask yourself a question okay whether you are earning as much as you want to earn or not 
At the end of the day, I believe it's all about being content with what you have earned. Okay, somebody is earning maybe two lakh or three lakhs a month, and you are earning one lakh. If you're content with what you are earning, then it's enough for you. So it's not that everybody is saying big things. Okay, money cannot buy happiness. Uh, money is not the end of the road, and you have to do. I always say that money is very important part of your life. Honest, honest opinion is that money is very important because in the world, the rules and regulation, law, economic system, your financial system is dependent on money, and you are part of that system. Unless you break free from that system, you destroy the system away. You are living in a product-based economy. I will see. It's. I am. I am sure. I, it will not be because too much technical. When you have a product-based economy, well, like in there was times where you have barter trade or anything. Things for things. Utility-based economies were there, and we can have in the future also. But as of now, as current world is going on, so you cannot live without money. You have to have enough money in your pocket, so in order to live a life that you wanted to live, and you wanted to give people also, share with them, spread that happiness and joy, because at the end of the day, you are only get honored for giving, not receiving. So what you want to be honored for? So giving away or receiving a lot of things. See, I always say that rich man is always a beggar because he always wants more and more. So you have to get content at the end of the day with what you have, and that in contentment that you will have, in that you will find true happiness. So live life on your own terms. Spend time on the things that matter to you most. At the same time, earn money also. Make your passion your profession, and you will earn a lot of money also, and you are enjoying it also. So that's what is all about. Money is part and parcel of your life, so take care of it also. Over to you, Prasad Singh. I think we have finished this session. Ratos Masahishan, would you like to read out the timing, or you will put in the chat? Hishan. Uh, excuse me, please. I didn't receive my timing. Two minutes. Yes, two, two minutes, two seconds. Two minutes, two yeah, seconds. Two minutes and two uh, seconds. The Toastmaster Padma Lena is there. No, she doesn't want to take part. She says she will take part in this session. No worries. Okay. Uh, two, two minutes, sir. Two seconds. I think you can only say anybody who had overshot, maybe then, because most of them are gone. Only Correct. few of us are here. So what's the point of reading their time? No worries. I'll, I'll, I'll put it in the chat. Yes, better. No issues. Yes. Raised her hand. She might want to speak something. May I? Uh, yeah, and I just want to add something to uh, T M uh, Umar's uh, thing. You know, performance. Nobody commented on him, so I was just asking for that. Oh, his topics are the best. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what are your comments? <laughs> uh, well, I think you made such pertinent uh, point about uh, you know both sides of the coin. And I think uh, we all owe you a word of appreciation for the lovely topics you have brought out. And so I really found that missing link that you require this word of appreciation as well for your performance. Thank you. Thank you. He's, uh, he's always there. He's a favorite one. If you see today, we had almost 31, 32 um, uh, participants. His, his topics are all philosophical. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I think uh, with this, uh, we'll end the meeting. Amjadi is not there. I'll say mm -hmm. thank you to Toastmaster Omar, Toastmaster Hishan, and everyone there. I'll stop recording, then you can chat. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Stay blessed. Thank you.